Uh, so, uh, hello and welcome. I'm Sean Roberts, um, Chief Technologist from Lincoln Network, and I have with me Washington State's Secretary of State. I just repeated myself. <laughs> Kim Wyman. Thank you for joining us, uh, Kim, if I can call you Kim. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we're working on a, a project, um, actually we're working on a couple of different things having to do with elections, but uh, more specifically, um, we wanted to ask some questions um, around what's going on with Washington and Washington's experience with voting uh, by mail. So I guess my first question would be, um, Washington State has um, a, a history with voting by mail, um, leading the way, so to speak. Um, uh, if you could give me a synopsis of what Washington State's experience of voting by mail has been so far. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we really started moving towards vote by mail back in the 1990s. Uh, we allowed any voter to become a permanent absentee voter. And by and that was in 1993. By about 1997 or so, about 60% of our voters were choosing to vote by mail every election. And so this all rolled along right up until we had the closest governor's race in the country's history in 2004. And what we realized in that election was we couldn't do a full poll place election and a full vote by mail election simultaneously and do each of them well with the existing resources we had. So our legislature in 2005 allowed us by county to move to vote by mail elections. It still took our state six years to completely transition and in 2011 um, all 39 counties had moved to vote by mail elections. So yes we have a lot of experience with them. What, what kind of safeguards um, does Washington have in place to, um, to uh, prevent fraud and other, uh, some of the other reported problems that we've heard in the news lately around uh, voting by mail, uh, by absentee? Well, you know, what's nice about Washington State, because we've had this long ramp up uh, to our current, you know, 2020 election, we have a lot of security measures around our, our balloting process. First and foremost, um, all of our counties account for every single ballot that they receive and, and they have the same actually accounting measures on the way out. So they know how many ballots they printed, how many are going out to voters. And then as they come back in, each county is keeping track of every single ballot that comes in. And at the end of the election, they can tell you how many ballots were counted, how many were rejected, and if they were rejected, why they were rejected. And so that um, that chain of custody is really, really important and building a really solid audit trail. The real linchpin we use to make sure that the ballot that we count was returned by the voter who sent it is checking their signature against the signature on file with their voter registration form. And um, we do that for every single returned envelope. If the signature for some reason doesn't match, we uh, notify the voter and this does two things. One, it gives the voter a second chance, which is always a good thing. And second, if the voter hasn't returned that ballot, but it's a, it's a security measure. The voter's gonna contact the elections office and say, hey, I haven't voted yet. They can pull that ballot aside and then do the investigation on uh, potential fraud and then prosecute if they can uh, make that case. Excellent. And, and, and actually, um, that's something that came up uh, earlier when I was uh, talking to another elections official. Um, if, uh, if a voter had returned an absentee ballot and either realized that they had forgotten to sign, which would, um, I assume, would reject their ballot, um, or and or um, track their ballot through the online um, tracking system that Washington State uses. Uh, hopefully, I'm getting that correct. Uh, and um, and they see that their ballot has been rejected, or they they uh, uh, suspect it might reje be rejected. What would the what would be the correct course of action at that? that point for the, from the voters perspective. Well, one of the things that's really great about Washington's system is that we have a really long voting period. So in fact, uh, ballots are gonna go out on October 16th um, and across the state, they have to have gone out by that time and that date. Mm -hmm. And then right. voters have an 18 day voting window or more to, to return those ballots to election officials. And then like you said, they can track those ballots once, uh, once they've been received by county election officials and see whether their ballot's ready to count 
or if it's somehow being challenged. And that whole process lasts in that 18 day window. And then in our general election, we have a 20 day certification window where um, if the voter uh, finds out that their ballot's being challenged because they forgot to sign or because their signature doesn't match, they have time to uh, sign a new oath and, and make sure that that ballot gets counted. And um, you know, our, our state is also a postmark state. I forgot to mention that. So as long as the postmark of the ballot is on or before election day, as long as we receive it 20 days after election day, that ballot will be counted as well. Wow, 20 days. Okay. Well, it, now that you bring that up, would that affect um, certification of the, the ballot results or the election results? You know, I think it helps. I, I think that our long, you know, certification window is really helpful, uh, particularly with what's happening at the USPS, and we're hearing about potential slowdowns and and things. So we want to just make sure that no voter is disenfranchised because of some administrative, you know, choice or or um, change in process. So um, I think we're we're in a really good position to give that full extent of of time to our voters. And uh, you know, we don't see many ballots that come in in that last few days, but we we still get a few and, and those are ballots that we can count and we can empower the voters. So it's a good thing. Great. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lincoln Shorts.